we do the news. Uh, sometimes I do entertainment. I talk about celebrities or makeup or uh, restaurants around Boston. I do uh, tons of stuff. Um, I've also been into writing, so I've been published in a few magazines before. Um, but I do the news because when I finish college, which is a long way from all of you guys, I will work on TV to be, um, yeah, just like when your parents watch the news, that'll just be me there. And I know Natalia, that's like your, your dream job, right? I really do like writing, so I want to travel as a journalist. Like I want to want to do like documentaries and things like that and like write news columns. So what we're going to be doing for the next couple weeks, um, I'm going to share my computer with you guys because I do have some slides that uh, we made that Jade and I worked on. Um, and I'll just say really quickly, I, I don't necessarily consider myself a journalist at this point. Like I don't do the news primarily. Um, mostly I run the youth programming and the radio station at Centerville Media Center. Um, but I did start doing news when I was in high school. Um, I was the entertainment editor of the high school newspaper. So I used to write a lot of articles and I used to specifically focus on music. I was really interested in music and I went to a lot of concerts uh, back when we were allowed to go to concerts. Um, <laughs> and I would write about them and I was really interested in being a music journalist. So like writing um, articles about musicians and stuff. And I used to do it for online blogs and for some news um, magazines and stuff like that. So it was really fun and I loved it a lot. And so I'm excited to get to um, share my passion for journalism with you guys. We're all gonna be journalists in this, pro in this project. For the next six weeks, we're all gonna be journalists. We're gonna listen, we're gonna observe, we're gonna take notes, we're gonna research, we're gonna care about things in our community and we're gonna share the information that we find honestly and authentically with our community in a real way. And that's pretty cool. Um, so at SCAT TV, which is also Somerville Media Center where I work, we have a local TV channel. So our job is to tell the stories that aren't really being shown in the mainstream media. Um, if we talk about the news, a lot of times, what are the kinds of stories that you guys generally hear on the news? Also get news about usually, like, do we get news about stuff like good things that are happening in our community? on channel five or on channel Fox 25, like when you turn it on, right? And maybe you guys don't really watch TV news, but generally the news stories are about what you've already said. They're usually about stuff that's happening in the country, um, stuff that's happening like with coronavirus. And usually it's like the bad stuff. It's like, oh, this car crash happened or like, oh, this fire happened or oh, this, you know, shooting happened. We don't hear a lot of stuff about stuff in our own backyards, in our own community. And we also don't hear a lot of good news. We don't hear a lot of stories about things that are like happening that are good or positive. And that's something that at SCAT TV, we really try to address. And so we try to highlight stories that aren't otherwise being heard in the news, but are still important. Um, so I'm just going to play a really quick clip here of a cool, um, this was, not to make everyone sad, back when we still had things outside and festivals and parties in the street. This was uh, from the Honk Festival. Um, here's a little video about it that we did uh, for the news. Horns. Drums. Costumes. But it was not all fun and games. Somerville's annual Honk Festival is also about raising awareness on crucial issues and challenges facing the city, the country, and the planet. An opioid survivor hopes that with Pillman by his side, it will startle people and a force to make conversation. October 1st of this month, it's been six years that I haven't touched a pill. And I want to show other people how they can take that control too. So I'm about to walk this whole parade and stop, and I'm going to share that with thousands of people and show them that they are important and they need to know what's going into their body. He was not the only one with concerns. You know, since, since the 2016 presidential election, the level of distress and dismay among my constituents has skyrocketed, not just because of some abstract political differences, but because of federal policies which hurt people. Fighting hurtful policies with music and art brought community empowerment. So if you want to shift people's perspective, you got to do something out of the ordinary. And art's really good for getting people to think about things maybe in a different way than they did yesterday. 
And yeah, if a bunch of us can dress up and do weird things in the streets, maybe there's a reason for that. There were hundreds of costumes and thousands of marchers and spectators, and everyone made a lot of noise about life and death issues. I'm a professor. We're here with our class, Anthropology, Myth, Ritual, and Symbol. This melting earth cream cone represents the efforts that we want to make to bring attention to the disproportionate impacts of climate change on people of color and communities of color. The theme this year was we all need a home, housing for all, sanctuary for all, a healthy planet for all. Will street activism turn into political action? We'll be watching. For Somerville Neighborhood News in Harvard Square, I'm Stephanie Wittenbaugh. All right, so what'd you guys notice? What'd you guys notice from that news story? What'd you like about it or what did you pay, what did you notice? Let me see if I can see everybody's face now, sorry. Uh, Seth, you have a hand up. Uh, a mirror, um, that, um, people were fighting, um, um, for stopping climate change and, um, and, and other stuff. I can't really hear. There was noise in the background at, um, not on there and the other, um, in my house. Oh, okay. But that was right. You totally, you nailed it. So, Part of it was about this festival, the Honk Festival, but part of it was about going deeper into that story and talking a little bit about the different issues that people cared about and why that Honk Festival happens. It's not just a big party, it's also an activism-like event where people are fighting for, you know, fighting against climate change or fighting for sanctuary for all people, right? So that all people have a place, have a home or have, can afford to live in Somerville, for example. So that's just an example of a really, of a positive news story that's also like, it's very local. It's something that's important to us, even though it's not on the mainstream news. Um, and then I'm gonna show, this is another example of a news story, like when we highlight things that are happening or things that our neighbors are doing that are really cool. So this is another example of a type of news story that we can do. Nope, ah, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> I came to Artisans because somebody told me I could build a tall bike. Most people around here know me as Pastry Queen. I'm part of your friendly neighborhood bicycle chopper gang known as Skull. We don't all have the money to invest in having a full bike shop and a full welding shop and a full wood shop and a jewelry studio and all of these things in our houses. And we live in Somerville, let's be honest. Most of us don't have the space to even have part of one of these things. And so being able to have a space to come to where you can leave your frustrations behind and express yourself through the art and science of making and be able to say, I want to learn how to do X. Can somebody teach me that? And more likely than not, somebody will say, yes, I'd love to teach you how to do that. So one thing I just want to point out in this story, which first of all, it's very cool. I don't know if you guys knew this, but there's a cool, very cool bike gang in Somerville called Skull. If you've ever seen a group of bikers go around at night with lots of lights and sound on their, coming from their bikes, it's probably Skull. So one cool thing that the news does is it tells stories that otherwise you wouldn't know about, right? About cool people in your community that you could get involved with. The other cool thing just to notice in this news package um, and something that we'll talk about if you guys wanna do news packages, anything like this, you have the, this part where you're interviewing somebody and they're talking. And then this part where you have the images of what the people are talking about. So this is called A roll and B roll. And we'll come back to this, but I just wanted to illustrate it for you guys to pay attention to the B roll um, which is just like the images that come up when people are talking that help to illustrate the point. So that's a really easy way to put together a news package is just with that A roll as the interview and then the B roll adding to the story. Um, Seth, what's up? You got a question? Goal was, um, I've watched, um, I forgot it. I haven't watched it in a while, but it's the show of engineers. And one time um, someone wanted, 
someone like the gang leader school, the person in charge wanted them to make a really tall and awesome bike. And oh, I forget the name of that guy, but he had like a, a skull on the top of his bikes or something. That's awesome. And, there was, and I think the bikes were called school bikes, really tall bikes yeah. with the needles. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's super cool. So I don't know for the rest of you guys, maybe you didn't even know that and now you learned something. Um, and then this last one, this was from the last time we did You News, we did for April Vacation and you might recognize Max. Hi Max, you're famous, you're in this news story. And Max helped edit this story as well. So we're gonna just watch a, uh, this one quickly just to give you another idea of a news story that we've done with young people. This week at the Somerville Media Center, we have been participating in a youth journalism program reporting on the coronavirus and the impact it's had in our community. We have decided to interview each other and our family members on how they're staying busy and sane. I mean, at first I felt really happy, but then it sort of went to like, okay, because I knew I'd be bored because I don't have a lot. I mean, I have a lot to do, but like, after doing it over and over again, the same things every day, it gets boring. I've been doing like computer games and I've been crafting. I made a wooden Ferris wheel miniature um, and I've just been doing diamond art. Diamond art is when you have tiny individual plastic diamonds on a very sticky platform that's like already has a de design on it and you have to do certain colors in certain places and at the end you get a really cool picture. Um, personally, it's just been very like trapped uh, in my house it, that that part isn't as bad as just not being able to like see anybody or go anywhere um i play a lot of animal crossing and i've been doing game design and then i can't really see a mic anywhere this is the mic. oh that's the mic oh okay <laughs> um it's making things really boring yeah because i can't i mean I never thought I would miss school, but I do a little bit, mm -hmm. and I can't get together with my friends for my birthday. Um, I mean, I can hang out with my brother on my birthday, I guess. I've been watching movies with my friends on Netflix party. Mm -hmm. I've been painting a lot and kind of redoing my room, and I've been hanging out with my little brother. Oh, that's very nice. Yes, he's a really cute little kid. We hope that this inspires you to get creative with your time at home and that you're also staying sane. For the Somerville Neighborhood News, I'm Kai Limerick. Hey, all right. So, so that's an example of a news package, uh, which is something that you can pre-record and you do some research and you have some interviews and you have some B-roll, like this very cool shot uh, of Max playing guitar. So uh, very, very cool. So that is a news package. And I'm going to hand it over to Jade in a minute to talk about doing a news broadcast. So they're a little bit different, but we can do both in this group. So I'm giving you examples of both to get you inspired. Um, Max, I'm so sorry. Your name is Max. I know that, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I had your name wrong in that story. I don't know why. Uh, we'll fix it in post. Um, so what makes a good story? Couple things. A good story is timely. It's something that's relevant right now. It's something that's important right now. Okay. A good story is close to home. So it's something that affects you and people in your community. So it's something that matters to you and it matters to your community. And a good story provides accurate information that people need, okay? So I'm gonna hand it over to Jade to talk a little bit about making a news show and a news cast and, and what is a little bit different about it and also what's similar about what we just saw. So we just saw news packages and what we're gonna make is a news show and our news show might have news packages in it um, as well. But I want um, Jade to kind of explain what a newscast is. Okay, so 
like Heather just said, what we watched is a news package and it involves like interviews, B-roll, like when people are talking, you see other footage so you're not just staring at someone talking. Um, but a newscast is something that I do, which is like a little different, which means that if you've ever seen the news before, you see a bunch of like news anchors and they hand it off to each other. So a bunch of different people talk and it happens all at once. So a newscast is something that like um, includes like tons of different topics. So whatever, like what we're going to do next week, whatever you guys are like interested in, if you like celebrities or you like what's going on with Black Lives Matter or you like the weather or you like Corona or, you know, restaurants, places to eat. Or I don't think anyone likes Corona, but I know what you mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to talk about it um, or like stuff that you like to do or comedy, basically anything you want, whatever you want to do, you get to do. Um, and then something else that's extremely important is uh, the script writing. The pre-production makes an effective newscast and you don't want to talk for too long. You don't want to talk for like over, you know, two minutes because then, you know, sometimes if people start to lose interest, you want to see different stuff. So typically like when I do it, when I'm on TV, I keep mine between my, the people who run the show tell me to keep it under a minute. Here's going to be our first activity that we do, our first assignment, okay? So we're going to ask you to practice coming up with a news story um, about something that fun that you did this weekend or something interesting that happened this weekend. Um, it doesn't have to really be this weekend. It could have happened a week or two ago or whatever, but you wanna pick something that is interesting that you, that you witnessed, that you observed, that you participated in, and you're gonna report it like it's a breaking news story. Um, so we're going to give you some time to practice writing out a script. And again, this is only something that maybe is 30 to maybe a, 30 seconds to a minute tops. Okay, guys. So this is my example. This is something that really happened to me on Saturday. So I don't know if any of you guys have ever been to Cape Cod in Massachusetts. But so this is my example newscast. Um, wait, wait one sec. So this is how you, if you guys can see it, this is how you make a newscast. And then something that I always am told when I'm doing the news is that you always end with your name. You never start with your name in the beginning. You always end with your name. So you say, for you news, I'm Jade Lopez, because that's me. So my newscast, and you want to say it while you look at the camera. You don't want to be looking everywhere else. You want to make sure you have complete focus. So what I happened, what happened to me over the weekend, I'll read my little newscast. So. Over the weekend, I ventured down to Cape Cod where I had an incredible experience. While I was kayaking with some friends along Harding Beach, we, learned it, we noticed a large gray creature was approaching us. To our surprise, we were greeted by a seal. It swam beside us for a few moments before disappearing into the big blue ocean. And despite the overwhelming cuteness and excitement we felt from meeting the gray seal, we, always, we also kept in mind that with seals come predators. And over the last couple summers, there have been numerous sightings of a great white sharks. These sharks not only enjoy preying on seals, but are one of the three kinds of sharks who attack humans. So while swimming, kayaking, and enjoying the water are all fun and games, make sure to always be aware of your surroundings. And remember that great whites have large jagged fins, love to eat seals and otters, and are populating Massachusetts beaches more and more every year. For you news, I'm Jade Lopez. And that's basically how your newscast should go.